and we're live! Woohoo! Welcome along to the live stream, everybody. For those that don't know me, let me introduce myself. Hello! I'm Gavin Hoey. I am one of the presenters right here on Adorama TV, the channel you're watching. If you're watching us live, say hello in the comments. If you're watching the recording, say hello in the comments. It works both ways. Um, if you are watching us live, don't forget to give us a thumbs up and uh, do comment on the comments because it helps us build the, uh, the, the live stream as we're going through. So what am I going to be, what am I going to be, what am I going to, we'll edit that bit out. What am I going to be doing live? Well, first of all, this is live. Anything can go wrong in the, uh, the next 50 minutes at one hour, we'll see. But I'm going to be doing lots of things with soft boxes, but I'm not going to be doing them on my own because I've got you guys watching and behind the camera, I've got the awesome Freya on the Super Switcher and also Sam on the comments. And you can see and hear them. Yeah, you can. Hi, everyone. We've got lots of people here already. Uh, shall I go through a few countries? Yes, go yeah. through a few. <clears throat> okay, so we've got um, Sweden, uh, Uganda. Wow. Um, Washington. It's Tacoma in Washington. Now, I found a really cool name. I love the names um, of a lot of the places in Australia. Let me find it. Let me find it. Oh, and I, this one, actually. This is Terry. This is Travel Tripod Terry, says hello from West Virginia. Yay! Yay! Travel Tripod Terry! <laughs> Fantastic. Um, That's Netherlands, it. Yeah. Portugal. Oh, where's my lovely place in Australia? Australia. 5 yeah. a.m. in the morning. Toowoomba, I think it's called. Toowoomba. Yeah. Yeah, Toowoomba. <laughs> there we go, Bertie Ann. What a great name. Uh, Netherlands, Norway, Argentina. They're everywhere. We should it's definitely fabulous. go live from Toowoomba. Yes. Wouldn't that be good? That'd be fabulous. Adorama <laughs> on the road, live in Toowoomba. <laughs> Me, Seth and Daniel will all be there. It'll be fantastic. All right. OK, so thank you very much for joining us from all around the world. It really is quite fantastic. Um, I've got quite a bit to get through. We're going to be doing softbox tricks and traps. I think I called it something alliterative. Um, so I'm going to try and answer some questions about softboxes, try and sort of debunk a few myths, maybe teach you something about softboxes that you thought was true and might not be true. And I'll ask you in the comments as we go along whether you think some of this stuff is true or not and perhaps confirm some stuff you already knew. Now, I can't do this on my own. I do need an assistant. And luckily, I've got one. I've got Chloe. <laughs> She's been waiting really patiently. Are you ready? It's the awesome Chloe. Oh, no, that, oh. Chloe! <laughs> oh, there we go. We wouldn't do that to Chloe. Can you imagine? So, uh, <laughs> yeah, let's put some of these out of the way. Uh, I've got a lot of soft boxes. Not all of my soft boxes, but I've got a lot of soft boxes. Okay, let's put that over there. And if you're watching live, of course, you have the opportunity to ask questions as we go along. And please do ask questions. Um, it it's always makes life a little bit more exciting for me. So. We're going to start with an umbrella versus a softbox. And a quick question. When it comes to choosing umbrella versus softbox, is the umbrella more efficient than the softbox? And it should be because an umbrella, uh, the other way around rather, is a softbox more efficient than an umbrella? That way around. A softbox should be because it's a more directional light. It protects the light from spilling around and just pushes it out the front. Where a shoot through umbrella pushes it up, down, sideways, backwards, forwards, not an efficient thing at all. So that's the theory. Soft boxes, more efficient. Truth or trap? Let me know in the comments. We're going to find out. This, this is an easy way. All of these things can be answered really easily. Just have a go. Now, very important. Two things I'm going to do first of all. Turn the flash on because uh, as somebody helpfully told me in the comments before we started, turn the flash on. Good advice, I, I like that. And then Chloe, I'm just gonna move the chair and give you something to sit on. Bit of love there for um, your full denim look from uh, Big Z. And Alan said, triple denim. <laughs> <laughs> and apparently uh, Toowoomba is 100 kilometers west of Brisbane. Good to know, just so we know just, when we're coming just, yeah, over. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, brilliant. It'll help with the travel organization. Okay, so let's see. I'm gonna try and aim for F8. Just to give me a kind of a, a point of reference and also a point of reference, I'm going to try and get all of these to be roughly the same distance from Chloe. Now we're going to use an international measuring standard that we've created for this to make it as scientific as possible. We're calling it one Chloe arm. 
That's the, the length of uh, distance. So, Chloe, would you like to uh, measure one Chloe arm length? There we go. Yeah, there we are. One internationally recognized Chloe arm length away from the light modifier. Okay, it's not scientific, but it will at least give us something that is um, useful and uh, repeatable. So, Chloe, I'm going to pop this near your chin. I'm going to get F8, which is, let's see, nearly there. All right, okay. Which camera am I on? That one. So just for reference, there we go, F8. Those are my camera settings. Everybody's got a note of that. I'm going to try and keep them the same throughout this entire live session. So I better actually dial them in. That would be good. There we go. Okay, so we know to get F8 in this setup, I'm going to be at, well, 1 16th and a bit. Let me just show you here if I can. Press that little button, there we go. 1 16th and a little bit gets me F8. We'll take a quick test photo, see how it looks. Do you want to hear a few opinions on the umbrella? Yeah, go for it. Uh, so Barney said, yeah, I suppose umbrella is more efficient if you have um, white walls and if you want filled in shadows. Um, and uh, IMCDNCN, I'm sure there's a snappier way of saying that. Uh, it's easier to carry an umbrella because it's lighter. Yeah, that's more efficient, uh, actually. Fair point. Yeah, Matthew, <laughs> depends on what you want it to do. Fabrice, uh, the umbrella is more practical if it's raining. Well, it's raining a lot. I here have at seen the Seth Fabrice. buy an umbrella from the Adorama store, run outside in the rain just to keep dry. It's, it's not a bad idea. Okay, so efficiency wise, I'm talking about the amount of light we need to push through it to get the exposure we're after. But of course, there's an awful lot of interpretation in this. So as a result of the images, did we get to see that one? I forgot, there we go. Okay, that's pretty good. We've got nice lighting on Chloe from this umbrella. It looks gorgeous, isn't it? Note the bright spot in the top right corner. That's gonna come in useful, kind of keep a mental note of that. Okay, let's switch this out. And we'll use the softbox instead. Now I'm trying to find in my collection of softboxes something that's about the same size when I'm comparing various soft boxes, and this I think is the closest I've got, give or take a couple of inches. So that's what we're gonna use, and you'll find links to all of the gear I'm using in the video description down below. And let's put this on here. Top tip, if you're using the Bowens system of mounts, don't try and lift your soft box onto your light. That is a truth. That will drive you mad, it really will. It's, it's so hard to get it on. Do it that way round. If you've got pro photo, it's a lot easier, I'm told. Okay, so first thing is, if I spin this around, am I gonna hit Chloe? Okay, <laughs> most important thing by far. I'll try and get it at roughly the same height. And we're gonna go one international standard Chloe's arm length away, okay. So we have the softbox at roughly the same position as I had the umbrella. Now, hopefully you paid a few mental notes and attention to what we had before. F8 is what I'm going for. I haven't changed the power of the light. This is a softbox. It should be more efficient. It's silver lined. No light's gonna go up, no light's gonna go down. It's all gonna go forward. This should be brighter than F8. And the result is... Da -da 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 -da. Exactly the same. It's exactly the same. Anybody put exactly the same? It... Uh, we've got, we have got a few questions though. Okay. Uh, what if you don't use a 1 250th uh, shutter speed? Would the flash not make sense? Okay, that's a good one. Let's deal with that one. Um, I'll show you that. That's, but I'll take a picture of Chloe and then I'll show you exactly how that works. Here we go. Quick little photo of Chloe. Okay, there you go. And I'll take a picture at a different shutter speed as well. So if I take my shutter speed um, down to one 125th, so half the shutter speed, or is it twice? I can never remember which way around it is. But yeah, quite different. And I'll take the same picture again. Okay. Here we go, and we'll have a quick little look at this. Now, I've been practicing with this. Hang on a second. Let's pop that there. Hang on. And that there. There you go. Those two pictures are both taken with the same softbox at the same power. 
but one's taken at 250th of a second and one's taken at 1 125th of a second. Can you spot any difference? The answer is possibly you may get a little bit more fill light in the shadows because as I increase the shutter speed, make it a, a slower shutter speed, let more light in, I will get more of the room light affecting my picture. Usually we do the no flash, no picture picture. Is that too many pictures? That works, doesn't it? Yeah, that's right. Um, but today we've got a lot to get through, so I'm assuming you've seen that before. Okay, um, so the answer is yes, the shutter speed does matter if your room is bright. If your room is dark, it's less of a problem. Some more questions? Yeah, go for it. Uh, so Anch asks, does the umbrella soften the light more than the softbox or is it similar? Okay, let's have a look. Good question. So let's go find the softbox versus the umbrella image and we'll pop them around the same way as I had before. So we'll put that one on that side. Uh, hold on. Oh, I can't have it on the same one, apparently it's telling me. Hang on, one second, right with you. That way. <laughs> Just finding the limitations of my tethering software. There we go, versus that one. Okay, whew, <laughs> I'm glad no one saw that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what you've got on the left of your screen is the umbrella. What you've got on the right of the screen is the softbox. Remember, as it turned out, they were both as efficient as each other. I didn't need to increase my flash output to get the same results. Can you see the top right corner that I alluded to earlier? With the umbrella, it's actually brighter because the light has spilled past the umbrella. On the softbox one, it's darker because we get a bit of vignetting with the softbox. It's a bit more directional, or at least it doesn't spill out the sides. So there is a difference in that point of view. Is there a difference in the softness between the two? No, you tell me. I mean, the thing about all of this stuff is there's always gonna be nuances, but bigger picture, I don't think there's much difference. I think they are broadly similar. And that makes sense because they are broadly the same size of light. Although I would have expected perhaps a little bit more bounce with the umbrella from the walls. I'm not really seeing it. So it's, it's fun. You should definitely do these sort of tests if you're asking those sorts of questions. Good question. Though. David okay. asks, this should be quite a quick one. Uh, David asks, is there an internal baffle in the softbox? Yeah, that is a great question. And the answer to that one is, wait for it. Yes. Oh, now I've got to put it back on. Yes, there is. Um, oh, that was a bad idea. I should have just said yes. <laughs> Why did I do that? There we go. You like the noise. Yeah, I do. I like that kind of like, <laughs> I'm going to be ripping telephone books in half next. I'm going on record breakers. So, yeah. <laughs> okay, so um, next thing we're going to try is feathering the light. So with a softbox, one of the things about a softbox is you'll often hear the term feathering the light. So if you turn the light, you're going to direct the light. Is that true? Does that actually make any sense at all? So truth or trap? Feathering the light by turning it actually does something. Let me know. Let me know what you think. Okay, let's pop that up there somewhere. Uh, light is basically facing Chloe. Is it still one international Chloe arm length away? It is. Okay, perfect. So it should, in theory, still be F8. And it is. Take my word for it. I can do that camera. Oh, you. Oh, you. Oh. <laughs> Honestly, F8. <laughs> a tiny studio but I don't know if I'll clock up the steps in this place. Okay, uh, right let's take a test picture make sure everything is working and we have a, a reference to start with and lots I of will... truth to that last okay. question. Okay, we reckon truth. Interesting, let's click that button there and go full screen. Okay, there we go. So nice picture, nice lighting, looks good. Yep, looks pretty good. Okay, so what happens when you feather the light? So I'm gonna turn the light. Whoop, it's enough. I've turned it, I've feathered it. Uh, a good question to ask your model is, Chloe, can you see any of the softbox? Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course you can. <laughs> so it's worth asking the more you turn the, the softbox to check whether your model can still see some light. It's, it, it can be turned too much. Okay, here we go. 
And the difference between that one and this one, look at that. Can you see the difference? How much did I turn it? Like nothing. Yeah, feathering the light with a softbox has quite a dramatic effect, particularly when it's in close like this. If it's backed up, it's, it's less of an effect, obviously. Um, so do bear in mind, if you turn the light even a little bit, yeah, it's gonna have an impact, it's true. How far can you turn it before things start to become really weird though? So uh, let's keep turning it, let's just keep going. Okay, here we go. Chloe, can you still see any? Okay, right, here we go. Now I haven't changed the output of the flash, but things have changed in the picture. And Chloe is actually getting light on her face, even though the angle, we don't really have a good camera angle for that, but it, how much can you see? About that much? About that much? So, about the width of your screen. <laughs> Look, it was last year's joke, but I'm gonna recycle it. <laughs> I don't care. It doesn't work when you're doing it live on a, a stage, so we can only do that as a live internet joke. That's, that's funny. Uh, anyway, <laughs> I digress. So uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty thin. And because of that, not a lot of light is actually reaching Chloe. So what I need to do is re-meter that light. Let's find out. We're aiming for F8. Chloe, I'm gonna pop this near your chin. Um, F6.3, two thirds of a stop more required. F. F8, wait for it, there it is. Back to F8 again. I have a question, but it's for me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so Lena asked, um, how are your chickens doing? So they're doing really well, th thank you, Len. Yeah, we've got six and uh, they're all tucked up in bed now because it's quite dark here. They put their pajamas on about half an hour before they go to bed and then they just take themselves to bed. So they're all sleeping. They're quite lazy. We're not getting many eggs at the moment, but they're still cute. Okay, <laughs> chicken update done, that's good. Um, so is it softer by feather in the light? I should have asked you that before I did it really. Through the edge of the softbox. So you'll often hear people say that the softest light from a softbox is the edge of the softbox. And we're gonna test that in more detail in a bit. But um, yeah, there we go. That is feathered light versus straight light. So let's pop them side by side. Let's pop that one as that one. Can you take a question? Yep, once I pop those on screen, go for it. Yeah, so Paul asked, um, does Gavin ever um, do the firmware updates on flashes? That's a really good question. Um, no, I think I've updated them occasionally when there was a new feature and I've got a, a transmitter that wouldn't work with it. But um, once I get a stable setup, I haven't really changed any of the firmware. I had to do one for, work, for an old flash I, I got out of the loft recently and it was harder work than it needed to be. So I haven't actually changed any of these firmwares since I had them stable and was happy. So that's true. All right, there we go. So um, it's not really any softer when you look at the actual light coming in. It's basically the same, but feathering the light turns it away from the background. And of course you can do the opposite. Let's spin it around, there we go. Can you still see any of the softbox? Okay. Let's uh, come out of that, go into that, and we'll just do it exactly the opposite way. So in theory, the exposure should be the same on Chloe. Yep, there you go. Great light on Chloe, but now we have a light background. So feathering is most definitely something that a softbox is very good at. An umbrella, particularly a shoot-through umbrella, very much not good at. Okay, hey, we're rocking and rolling, aren't we? Let's try something a little bit more uh, controversial. Uh, yeah, you might want to step out of the way for this one because I know what's coming. Uh, we'll get rid of that whole thing. Okie dokie. So this one's going to be fun. Uh, this one requires the biggest softbox I own. Let me just move this around so you can't see them just out of shot. I'm running out of room in my little studio. This is it. This is the biggest softbox I own. And the question is going to be, for a really big softbox, you need a really big light source. Bigger the softbox, the bigger the light source you're required. Or to put it another, another way, 
you can't fill a large softbox with a small flash. Truth or trick. You can't fill a large softbox with a small flash. All right, first of all, I've got to get it open. Hang on. Yeah, here we go. Technically, it's an umbrella, but if you have the cover on it, in my opinion, it's a softbox. Now you've changed it from uh, trap to trick, <laughs> so you... <laughs> I knew I should have written these down yeah, first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So we've got lots of no uh, and traps and tricks. <laughs> so as if he wasn't confused before. <laughs> Everybody's right. <laughs> Everybody gets a medal. Well done. <laughs> OK, so that is this is a seven foot parabolic umbrella from Westcott. Link in the video description down below. And as you can see, I am also seven feet tall. There it is, actual proof that I am seven feet tall. <clears throat> Let's move on swiftly. Okay. Spoiler alert, they measure the outer curve, not the, not the diameter. It might be slightly under seven feet before anyone hires me for basketball. Okay, so this, I should show you actually before I put it in. Let me show you. This is the smallest flash I could find. Here we go. This is the Flashpoint Mini. Flashpoint Mini. This is a normal flash. This is the Mini. Okay. Just to give you an idea of size, this is powered by two AA batteries and that's it. Um, it's tiny, absolutely tiny, tiny, little, tiny flash. It's just been pointed out by um, Steve, that's Petra and Steve, that uh, Chloe must be eight foot. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. I mean, one of the tallest women in the country, I believe, aren't you? That's, uh... <laughs> yeah, good point. I hadn't thought about that. Thanks, Steve. Okay, let's put that in there. So. Can this tiny light fill this giant seven foot softbox? Okay. Let's pop it up here, find out. Oh boy. I tell you what, I'm really glad it's a very lightweight light because this becomes quite unmanageable, this softbox, until it's on the stand. Okay, have it like that. It's turned on, which is important. There we go, safety first, safety first. Little sponge ball just to stick over the end because let's face it, Chloe is the clumsiest person ever. <clears throat> it's definitely not me, it's all Chloe. <clears throat> I've tripped over everything so many times. Okay, there we are. It's not gonna work, is it? <laughs> Probably should have tested this. Anyway, it doesn't matter, it's fine, we'll work it out. So, I never like to use any of my flashes on full power because you're really pushing the recycle time and that little thing takes a long time to recycle even on well, normal power really. So uh, I'm gonna go half power, half power and see where we get. I'm aiming for F8. There is no chance that we're gonna get F8, but out of interest, what do we get? Here we go, Chloe, I'm gonna pop this near your chin. Oh, is it one Chloe's arm's length away? Have we, have we checked? Gotta keep the international standard going. Here we go. Okay. I'm getting, da, 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 F5.6, one stop under. Now I could go to full power and actually get F8 that I've been working at. I don't want to do that. I'm quite happy to either increase my ISO or take my aperture down, which is what I'm going to do. Here we go, tiny little flash. But beautiful lighting. That looks right, doesn't it? That looks okay. So we've had a comment. Huge um, soft catch lights, yes. So you should use the flash for I bought you for Christmas. I should, shouldn't I? Yeah, I mean, that, uh, unfortunately that's not available from Adorama, so I couldn't use that. And it had two settings, on and off. That was it. Those were the two. Um, yeah, <laughs> uh, it, it kind of works. So at one Chloe's arm's length away, which we should probably measure just for, no, no, we won't. <laughs> so, <laughs> we won't. Uh, I can get F5.6 at half power. I could get F8 at full power. I can't believe it actually worked. There is a caveat to this that I'm really pushing what this little flash can do. Let's move that out of the way because I'm going to go a bit wider. 
Okay, so if I take too many pictures, hang on, let's see. There we go. <laughs> I take three pictures in quick succession. That's what I get on the last one. So the flash can't keep up. It's a, a very small flash. And that's just a little quirk of this particular flash. The question you should always ask yourself is not can a small light fill a large softbox? The question should be, how much light will I get out of it? Because even if I put my phone in there as the light source, I would get something out, but is that something usable? So whatever you put as the answer, yes or no, you were right. So I could have asked either way question and still, see, I was correct all along. Somehow I've managed to make myself right. That's, that's good. <laughs> okay, let's see if we can take some nicer pictures with this. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> okay, this is huge. Absolutely massive. Uh, okay, what I'm gonna ask Chloe to do is just stand against the edge here. There might be a bit of Photoshop cloning to remove a few bits and pieces. So I've got a question. Yeah, far um, away. So is the flash actually filling the umbrella or is it just a hotspot towards the center of it? Brilliant question. Um, Chloe, just step aside for a second. Don't take it personally, here we go. So if you're using an umbrella, this is an important thing to check. If you're using a large softbox that is absolutely massive, you might want to check this as well. Let me show you. So I'm gonna take a picture of the whole umbrella so I can see what I'm seeing. Okay, that's what I'm seeing, oh, there it is. That's what I'm seeing. So definitely a hot spot in the center and then it is still lit at the edges. So there's no dark bits. It's just a matter of it's less bright at the edges. Now I've got the little speed light set to wide angle with a little flip down um, Fresnel or diffusing a bit at the front. I could put another diffusing thing on to spread it even more, but I'd lose even more light. I could just put a bigger flash in, that would be a solution. Um, so it's not perfect and I'm not surprised. I could back it up a little bit, I could slide it through, or I could kind of live with it, which is what we're gonna do. Chloe, look towards the side, here we go. Let's see what we get. I'm gonna go back to my F8 aperture. Okay, so I've asked Chloe just to look along the length of the softbox. And by doing this, I'm getting a nice graduation. So I'm actually using that to my advantage. The fact that it isn't completely white all the way across actually looks quite nice. Um, Chloe, just take a step towards me. Whoop, that's it. So I'm backing Chloe up. Just gonna throw that background ever so slightly more out of focus. Beautiful. And we have that nice little catch light because it is such a huge light source. What we can do, did I mention I can feather, feather the light? <laughs> I can feather the light, there we go. As you were, in there. So I'm just spinning it around a little bit. Go closer to the softbox, lovely. Just spinning it around a little bit. Lovely, just putting a little bit more light just onto the front of Chloe's face by slightly feathering it. Easy. Let's take a few photos. So another question. Yeah, I'm gonna take some photos. You keep asking questions. So Thomas asks, would using a flash with a bare bulb eliminate the hotspot? Yes, to a degree. Um, it may not eliminate it completely, but a bare bulb is like, um, it's not quite 360 degrees, but it is a much broader uh, arc of light where any kind of flash with a, a reflector, and that's effectively what the speed light is, is always gonna push it forwards more than it pushes it to the side. Where a bare bulb, it just goes everywhere. So that would work really well. The best light in here would possibly be the, the stick light that we used on our last stream at the end of last year. Because that is a long, thin light that would go down the length of the umbrella really nicely. Let's drop a bit lower. Okay, Chloe, back where you were. By dropping it a bit lower, I can go a little bit more, well, not full length, we'll talk about that in a second, but I can certainly increase my, uh, my depth. A little step towards the wall, that way I don't trip on this. That's it, that bit. <laughs> okay, fantastic. And yeah, I know I can see the, uh, the edge of the light in it, but, and I don't hate to say it, fix it in post, but I could. Behind the scenes, so we have a behind the scenes, so we can see how it's working. 
Okay. This is good, isn't it? So yeah, you can indeed light a huge softbox with a tiny little speed light. Let's try one more with this setup because I can't believe it's working. Oh, you might want to step out for this one. Yeah, there we go. Uh, David asks, which way is the flash facing? Uh, is it facing the back of the softbox or forward? Yeah, it's facing into it. Um, hang on, David. Just for you. Just for you. Whoop. Hold, hold on, David. I'm coming. I'm coming. Here we go. Here we go. Uh oh, oh, I've lost my safety thing. David, I'm doing this for you. Okay. It's facing into it, David. It's in that way. Look, look, look. There it is. Okay. Are we happy with that? I wouldn't do that for anyone other than David. There we go. Uh, Right, that's made a right mess of that. No, he said he, he missed that. Can you do it again? <laughs> <laughs> just joking, oh. just joking. Oh dear, that's funny. <clears throat> oh, I was going to do it again. Okay. At least I don't need the little ball for this bit. Tighten that up. I could either get Chloe, I mean, I'm, I'm tempted just to say crouch, but let's go up. Okay, there we go. Nice overhead lighting. We've got walls, light's gonna bounce around here. Um, I'm gonna put it right there. Let's go into the corner for me. I love corners. So much fun. Okay, I'm gonna pop this near your chin. Okay, F5. Because it's a bit further away, so we may just have to sneak my flash up slightly. <laughs> the recycle time is super slow. F5, 6, there we go, we're in. So just over half power. This will be slow. Oh, helps to actually set your camera to F5, 6. No one look at that, nothing to see. No, no not that one, take that one off, quick, take it off. Oh, you, oh, honestly. <sighs> okay, uh, let's go horizontal as well. Uh, David apologized for making you do that because he, <laughs> he'd also asked you to take the baffle off as well. <laughs> I want to see the battle, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. No, okay. you keep doing it, David. <laughs> Let's not dwell on that. Okay, so beautiful lighting. So this is uh, light from above, but because it's such a large softbox, it's also light from the front, and you get that nice little uh, shadow because it's only just above Chloe's head. I'll take a couple of pictures until the flash runs out of power. Here we go. I'm going to say hi to another David, who is... Uh, in hospital at the moment, and he's learning lighting while he's recovering. That's a great thing to learn something, give you something to focus on. Yeah, it certainly will. Don't you feel better soon? Yeah, have a look at the lighting in the hospital and um, work out why it's so terrible. That's, uh... Do you not do that? I do that. I often sit there and watch TV programmes and think about the lighting and then try and work out how they've done it and why they've done it. It's, yeah, okay, I'll not mention that again. <laughs> um, it's going quite well, this little flash. These are all right. Ah, there we go. <laughs> Famous last words. There you go. So, um, yeah, not bad. Little mini flash, massive softbox, tick. Okay, let's move on. I wasn't gonna spend that long on that one. I'll just take this apart. Now's a good point if you've got any questions to, I mean, by the time you're a bit behind and, but. So, so few people have asked about the, um, the light meter uh, model, but I think all the the items that Gab's using. All the, Do you know that gear... one thing I didn't put in? Okay, scrub that. <laughs> okay, it's a good question. I got a feeling I missed this off. My mistake. There we go. So this is the Sekonic Speedmaster. Ignore that bit. It's the L858D, and because this one came originally from the United States. It's got a U at the end, so if you're not in the United States, and ignore Brian that. Brian has very kindly shouted that out, so I've popped that on the screen. Thank you, Dave, um, uh, Brian, for that. Another David there, was it? No, there's, him? there's lots of Davids <laughs> tonight. <laughs> if your name's David, you're not getting special treatment. Maybe that's why they're all going to call themselves David. Right. Clearly he's got a thing for Davids. Go over and above board. Right, okay. Sorry about the, uh, the audio there. <laughs> okay. So next, where are we? Uh, oh, okay, so I've got two softboxes now. Let's get them, let's bring them in. 
how many of you have got this one? Has anybody got, not necessarily this exact one, but a deep softbox? Okay, a deep, in this case, it's called a deep parabolic softbox. I think it's a 40, oh, it's a 48 inch. It's actually slightly larger than I thought. A deep parabolic softbox versus a beauty dish softbox. Can you spot the difference between the two? I mean, just straight away. This one is slightly smaller. It's the closest I've got. Uh, this one's actually a 42 inch, but honestly, it isn't gonna make any difference compared to each other. Um, yeah, I can tell you there's a difference straight away, which is that is very hard to do. And that's not that easy, but it's much easier. That one. Okay, that's quite heavy. That actually we is quite uncomfortable. just turned into some sort of weird gym now. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. How many reps can you do with yours? Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's not a bad idea. Let's start with the, uh, the easier one, because I like an easy life. And then we'll find a flash, and we'll have a little look and see if we can work out what the differences are. Okay. So pop this up here. I have a question while you're setting that up from uh, the last um, flash you were using. Ooh, is, it, yep. is it a little slower? It is, yeah. I mean, the, uh, the power supply for it, if I open this up, uh, the power supply for the little mini. This one is out of date. You can't actually buy this exact one. There's a link in the description to the up-to-date version. And I think the biggest difference is this one runs on two double A's. And these aren't even proper double A's. They're re rechargeable, recyclable, rechargeable. So they're actually lower voltage. So um, get, yeah, get the lithium ion one. It will recharge much, much faster, which is probably why they don't make this exact model. They make it still the same shape, new battery much faster recycling. Alrighty. So, large but shallow versus large but deep. And I can't really think of a question for this because there's gotta be a difference between the two. So I guess my question is, what is the difference going to be? What are you expecting when I take pictures with this versus pictures with the deep parabolic? Okay, so um, we need one arm's length away. Oop, there we go, pretty good. Happy with that. I need to turn the flash on. Because <laughs> I forgot. Did you give the depths of the softboxes? So the depth, I roughly measured them. This one, the, the beauty dish, the shallower one, is about 18 inches deep. And the, the larger one is about twice the depth. So it's just over three and a bit feet deep. So quite a bit, well, about twice. Okay, let's pop this needle chin. We're aiming for F8, that is F10. So you've got a few answers. Mm -hmm. the distance. Uh, nope. Let's have a look. I expect no difference between the two uh, with those diffusers on the front. Okay. Um, <laughs> not much difference, true. but a slight <laughs> contrast difference at the same distance. Uh, at the same distance, uh, deep will be more directional. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, same thing. Sharper shadow. Yeah. yeah. Um, obviously, yeah. that's obviously what's going to happen. <laughs> okay. So to get there, my F8 aperture, I ended up at. 1 16th power and a little bit again. Okay, let's take a little test photo of Chloe just to see how this looks. So a quick little test photo. And Chloe's right up against the wall. It's gonna look, whoa, oh, well, hang on. Again, don't put that one on the screen, Freya. We really should discuss this, shouldn't we? We'll t again, we'll take that out in the edit. There we go. <laughs> That's, yeah, better. <coughs> Okay, so um, that looks okay, but the photo you really want to take with any light modifier of any size during a photo session is, is this picture, because this is the most educational picture you can take. What's happening to your light? And as you can see, the light is coming out pretty much at 180 degrees. Yes, it's brighter in the center, but there is light coming down the bottom there is light going up the top, although I don't have much ceiling to actually to prove that. <coughs> so it doesn't have that direction that you're going to expect from the deep parabolic. Sorry. Is that you? I, I interrupted you. 
well, interrupt I was trying. Me. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Uh, so Rob asks, how does the focal point on a parabolic softbox work when the light is pointing out? Should we find out, Rob? Okay, so let's find out. So that is the, uh, the beauty dish flat version. Let's try the deep parabolic softbox, twice the depth, much heavier, much more heavy duty, clearly gonna be much, much more directional. I mean, clearly. I can't believe anyone would have said anything else. That's nuts, isn't it? Okay, but there you go. No accounting for people. Let's prove it. Okay, here we go. Chloe, you're gonna be one international arm's length away. There it is, marvelous. Um, so first things first, the parabolic nature of this should mean that it's more efficient with the light. That's, that's kind of what you expect from a parabolic. It is gonna maximize the light and it's all gonna be pushed forward. So. I should get more than f8 at the same settings. Here we go, Chloe. Oh, no, this isn't a good start, is it? Weirdly, my flash meter doesn't say 7.1. Don't know why Sekonic doesn't say 7.1, but I'm getting a third less light out of this. Hmm, interesting. Unexpected, but we can, we can. <laughs> that could be down to the internals. Let's put it down to that. Yeah, that's what it is. Okay, so I'll get this back to f8. And then we'll have a look at this amazing directional light that you get out of this. Okay, F8, there we go. Okay, here we go. So I'm gonna take a close up picture of Chloe and it is, um, oh, okay, oh, that's nice. Um, maybe I'll take a wide picture so we can see that actually happening. Here we go. And uh, we can now see how much more, di oh, oh no, wait, that, that's, that's not right. Hang on a minute. It was supposed to be more directional. What's going on? Yeah, you were right all along. You knew the, the answer. The problem with the, the, uh, the, the softbox is, just come back to me, Fro. Here we go. It's kind of like, from your point of view and from Chloe's point of view, other than the slight difference in size, they're exactly the same. There's no difference from, from, from that way at all. Because the last surface that your light leaves is your light source. What happens back here, not that important when you've got a big diffuser on the front. It's, you have to see it to understand it. I mean, you can write a physics paper about it and you can watch a lot of YouTube videos that say the opposite, but the actual truth is the light comes out pretty much 180 degrees. Let's, let's pop them on the screen next to each other. Okay, here we go. So let's have that one first and then that one, that one, okay. Okay, there we go. Side by side. Yeah. So if you said it was gonna be exactly the same, you were absolutely right. Uh, the diffuser is what's happening here. The diffuser is just acting like a light source on its own. So why did you get the parabolic if you got one? I'm not, I'm not gonna be able to give you an answer for that one, I'm afraid. But I can tell you how to make it a bit more directional. So all is not lost, don't worry. Let's rip this off and we'll reveal a couple of secrets. Yeah, the first one is... Someone had actually said that about the diffusion material. Double diffused. Um, yeah, Peter. Okay. Uh, double diffused, internal um, baffle. So the reason I was getting less light is partly down to the fact that the parabolic effect isn't working because this is a parabolic reflector, but we haven't got our light at the, the point of the parabolic. Uh, you'd need a whole different type of reflector for that to happen. What it does have is a really thick center in a baffle. So I'm losing quite a bit of light because these are all about one stop. So that's one stop, one stop, plus another stop there. So mm, bear that in mind. I don't know, can anyone notice I've got a bit missing? If you ever open any of my soft boxes, they'll look like this. And the reason for that is I need to get access to the bits to undo it. And I always leave a little bit of the inner baffle off so I can actually reach in underneath and do it easily. Top tip, if you're ever gonna do that, where is it? Because when this is in place, it's hard to know where you've left your little access point. That's what I use this for. The little bit of string that comes at the edge, that's the part I leave unclipped, so I can find it really easy on all of my softboxes. And if you're in the, uh, the comments typing, oh, that's what the zip's on the side's for, 
yeah, you try it on a softbox this size. <laughs> it doesn't work. Good for undoing, but not good for doing it back up again. Okay, so uh, yeah, international arm's length, harder to guess now, isn't it? Yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna estimate that. It's gonna push the light level up, isn't it? Here we go. Uh, F9? F9, eh, not as much as I thought. F8, there we go. Okay, here we go. Let's do a wide picture so we can see it actually in action. And there we are. What do you think? To be fair, it is definitely more directional. Um, I'll come out of that and put it on, uh, big on the screen, but it, it's not huge. To make this really work, you need a grid, but that is a whole nother video. Live stream, maybe. Okay, let's come out so, of that. So, uh, Ma Michael said, uh, Gabby needs to modify a light strainer to fit in a softbox. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, we can make it a bit more directional, but just bear in mind, the light is not going to follow the path of your uh, light shape if the inner surface is silver. If the inner surface was matte black, really absorbent matte black, or even better, had a grid, then you'd have a more directional light. But that throws problems in itself, and that's something for another video, another uh, day. I've got a question got more from to uh, Brad. Do you have a parabolic with the focusing rod? I don't. No, and I don't think I really need one in here either, because those things, by and large, are pretty big. And this is going back in my loft where it came from, and I probably won't use it again until the next time I have to demonstrate one of these because it's just too big for my needs. You know, the size is okay. I don't mind the, the 48 inch size, it's just the depth of it. I'd have to modify the cameras so you could actually see it in the live stream. Um, it's much easier all round to use the smaller version, just in every single way. It's lighter, it's more convenient. So I can't see myself using one of the parabolic ones with the rods, but never say never. <laughs> you never know. All right, okay, how are we doing? We have, oh, 10 minutes to go. Okay, let's do one more. Let's find, oh, okay. Let's do a strip box. Strip box, absolutely essential. Love a strip box. This is my go-to strip box for my studio because it is small. It is roughly the same size as your screen. The joke never wears thin. Uh, it is 12 by 36 inches. There, marvelous. Okay, so a strip box, anyone got one? Hopefully a few people have got them. I tend to use it as a separation light behind my subject. But a strip box, by its very name, is designed to give a strip of light. Okay, so let's see. Pop it there, there we go, Chloe. Let's get this little flash in here, here we go. We'll get back to F8 again. Okay, here we go. F6.3, F10, completely over the top. F9, yeah, close enough. Okay, so... There's a lot of love for the strip boxes. Strip box, um, oh, I love a strip James box. James said, especially with the egg crate, uh, grid. The grid on it. Mm. Okay, so it looks beautiful. It's nice. Not necessarily. We'll talk about light position in a second. Let's take a wide picture so we can see the strip of light coming out. And yeah, I mean, hopefully you were paying attention to the last one. It, it's it's the same thing. Strip boxes don't give you a strip of light. They give you a you know, wide beam of light. Yes, it's a more condensed hot spot in the center and the drop-off is in a smaller area, but it still spreads quite wide, unless you put a grid on it. Should we do that? Wasn't gonna do that, but I'll do it for you. I'll do it, I can do it, here we go. Let's do this, we're gonna go off topic, off plan. <laughs> like we had a plan. <laughs> okay. One international arm's length away, good Chloe, well done. Very good. It's definitely gonna be a bit more directional, so I will just make it a little bit more directional. There we go, look at that. Question with grids that you should ask your model is, Chloe, if you look through the grid, can you see the white of the light? If they can see the white of the light, some light will reach them. 
Okay, it's going to affect my exposure usually by a stop, not always. F5.6, exactly by a stop. Okay. F8. Okay, here we go. Quick little closer picture. Okay, closer picture. We can start to see something happening down the bottom here. We've got a bit more shadow coming in than before. That was before. That's with the grid. And if I take a wide picture, I'll discover where my light is actually going. So the grid gives us a tighter beam of light, but it doesn't focus the light. That's a Fresnel head, that's something entirely different. It just restricts the spread of the light. And you can get grids in different degrees. It, not for these lights, but for some lights you definitely can, but not sadly for these. And that's normally down to either the size of the holes or the depth of the grid. And if you want to have a more dramatic effect, take the outer baffle off. Definitely something for another time, because we've got one more thing to go through. That was a little off, off topic. All right, last one. Okay, strip box. Okay, Ooh, look at that, that was, that was impressive. Strip box for full length portraits, or at least nearly full length, not quite. Because that's kind of why a lot of people will get a strip box, because they want to light the entire length of somebody and get a nice even illumination. So will this strip box give me an even illumination on Chloe? Truth. Yes, it will. Trap. No, it won't. Okay. Here we go. Okay, so, yeah, let's try that. I should meter that, shouldn't I? Let's see what we get. Chloe, international arms length away. Yes, it is. Check. F14. Whoa. <laughs> that suddenly shot up. <laughs> Here we go. Someone asked before, but it got lost in the questions. Why F8? Why F8 is a brilliant question. Absolutely the best question possibly so far. Why? Why F8? Why not F11 or F2.8? And the answer is, it's in the middle. It's, it's in the middle of the, the range. There are some technical reasons why. For example, it minimizes the amount of the ambient light that I record, which in here with the video lights on is really bright. It's also the sweet spot of the lens for most lenses, but not all. So it gives you the, the crispest, sharpest image from edge to edge, but mostly it's just in the middle. It's just, just what I do, okay? I often use F5.6 or F8, and I'll interchange the two depending on what it's set to when I pick up the camera. It can be that basic. Good question though. Okay, so I'm gonna go vertical for this, knees or thereabouts, upwards, so will this give me even light on Chloe? Yes. But that was the wrong question. <laughs> it has given me even light. Look, here we go. It's given me really good light. It is about the same illumination on Chloe's hand, right the way up to Chloe's head. It's not really changing illumination. It's about the same. The problem is it's absolutely hideous. It's terrible. Never ever do this. A strip box will give you even illumination. But if you're photographing people, think about the direction of the light because most of the light is below Chloe's head. So her shadows are going upwards and it just looks wrong. There's no shadow underneath the chin, but there is shadow on the top of Chloe's head. It's all backwards. So if you want to have an even illumination, here's what you actually do. You pick up your light and you move it backwards and you keep going. Something like that. You put your light nice and high, way up there somewhere. Can't go any higher because that is the, <laughs> the rafters of the, the studio. And then you go, oh, have I gone too far? Can I actually get an exposure this far away? Actually, that is a good question, I don't know. Uh, here we go. F2.8, whoa. <laughs> 2.8. Okay, I'm aiming for F8. I'm gonna be probably half power. Oh yeah, you can hear the difference. Maybe, maybe not in the video, but I can hear. Can you hear the difference on the recycle time? Oh, that's a 
Okay, that all the time. we can hear it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but will I get that even illumination? Yes, I now have even illumination on Chloe from her knees all the way up to her face. I have a shadow that's dropping behind and away. What I don't have is the, the control, the contrast, the depth and darkness. But what I do have is what I actually wanted. And if I'm doing, say, family portraits or a group portrait, then this is what I would be doing rather than getting the lighting close. Backing my light up to get the evenness because of the inverse square law. Oh boy, I mentioned it. I did it. <laughs> That's really what's going on there. So that is giving me the, the consistency of exposure all the way along and the height of the light is giving me the shadow that is dropping away. So yes, you can use a strip box to get even illumination, but not how you think, because I would do that. Strip boxes go two ways, spin them around. I should ask a question, have we got time? We've got one, yeah, we've got two minutes. Last question, truth or trap? If I spin this around, whoops. Imagine I'm spinning it around now, there it goes. <laughs> am I gonna get a wide beam of light across Chloe or am I gonna get a thin beam of light? Let's see if people have just joined us. <laughs> right at the end. You have had a question, um, which might be a tough one for you to answer. Uh, this is to Bjorn. I hope that's... To Bjorn? Yeah, I'm going to say that. Or from? No. <laughs> <laughs> to Bjorn. Oh, I see. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I see. <laughs> if oh, you okay. only had one softbox, what would you have chosen? Oh. See, it's tough. Oh, it's one of those desert island questions. I'd probably go with a uh, two foot by three foot um, softbox because you can put things in front of it to shape it for different shapes. If you really want to make different catch lights, you can flag most of it off. We did that before in a previous video to make a strip box out of it. Uh, a two foot by three foot is just ubiquitous. And yeah, you can have nice portraits. You can back it up and do group shots. If I only had one, that would be it. You've had some answers to your question okay. as well. Uh, same beam of light, but with softer horizontal shadows and harder vertical shadows. Uh, you're going to get a fine beam of light, wide beam, you'll get the same beam of light. Uh, the softness of the light changes direction, mm -hmm. even illumination, but more specular light. Ooh, we haven't even talked about specularity. <laughs> oh, I'll leave that to Daniel. Yes, okay, let's find out. And the, the best answer to that is, well, let's find out. Let's just have a go. If you've got time on a model session, just, or even not a model session, you be the model, just stand there and learn what it does before you actually get into a real world photo session. Okay, let's go vertical, here we go. Ta-da, okay, let's see what we got. Did we get any difference whatsoever? Uh, I can do that one and hang on, hang on, but bear, bear with me, bear with me. Nearly there, here it comes. Okay. Can you spot any difference? Spinning the softbox around from being one foot vertical to three foot horizontal has given me a small difference. Have a little look at the shadows. There is a little bit more detail in the shadows on this one, I'd say, but I'm really, really looking hard. And I think that's probably because the light is closer to the wall. I'm getting a bit of more bounce. That's my best guess or just slight differences. The differences are pretty, pretty small. So by all means, spin your softbox around if it's a strip box, but you really, whoa, here we go. Fast and furious with the cables, bear with me. <laughs> oh. So a strip box really makes a difference in shape when you do this. Chloe, I'm gonna pop the strip box right next to you, as close as I can. Something like that. Back edge lined up with Chloe. What are we aiming for? We're aiming for F8. It's no longer one international arm's length away, on purpose. F40. That's quite bright, wasn't it? <laughs> Even I felt that one. <laughs> uh, F10. Seth said, uh, is this guy still going? Iron Man over here. <laughs> Trip over man. <laughs> 
Seth, we're nearly done, nearly done, two minutes. F8, here we go. So that gives me horizontal light, which gives light on the opposite cheek. Oh, I've still got me, hold on, hold on, hold on. There we go. Light on the opposite cheek. Oh, that's my phone, <laughs> telling me I should have stopped. Uh, versus, here we go. Light on the opposite cheek is almost the same. Chloe, little baby step forward, keep coming, keep coming. The difference is I've got control. So if I move Chloe another little baby step forward, oh, there you go. How far did she move there? Not a lot, and we get that. Let's spin it back the other way, as you were. And then a little step backwards where you were. Basically the same. So the horizontal versus the vertical. When I've got it in horizontal, I've got a lot more wiggle room. I can get the position wrong, if you like, more than when I've got it vertical. Okay, look at that, what a difference that made. So strip boxes are more forgiving when they are long and thin and less forgiving when they're tall and short. Oh boy, there we go. There is a lot of information to take in. So hopefully you found that something useful, or at least maybe mildly entertaining as we stumble our way through the world of soft boxes. <laughs> um, hopefully that gave you some information you didn't have before, some knowledge about the lighting that you've not experienced before. The best thing to do is to take your lights, take some wide pictures, experiment with them and see what they are actually doing. You'll, you'll learn an awful lot that way. Okay, have we got any last questions, Sam? Anything to wrap up with? No, you're right. This, I mean, we had so many questions. There was over 600 people watching. No. Yeah. <laughs> so thank you all for your questions and comments. And I, I see all the comments, but they flash, they flash by <laughs> tonight. So sorry if we didn't get to yours. Um, I think we'll probably do something similar again. With slightly different lighting. With slightly because, different lighting. Yeah, because there was just so many questions. Yeah. Thank you everyone for joining. And Good. Um, please just click the like and don't forget to uh, sign up for the notifications as well. Yep. With the bell icon. And Happy New Year. Oh yeah, I suppose. Uh, so if you've enjoyed this, yep, click the like button. Um, click on the subscribe button. If you want to find out more about Chloe, you'll find her Instagram details in the video description below. So go give Chloe a follow on her model page. Uh, I'd like to thank Freya and Sam for doing the awesome work behind the scenes. You didn't see them, did you? There they are. <laughs> Spent a lot of time putting that camera up there. Thank you very much. <laughs> Uh, thanks to Adorama for letting us do this yet again, and we're going to be back. Um, I don't think it's four weeks, is it? I think it's six weeks for the next one. Or is the next one four weeks? Anyway, keep watching the Adorama YouTube page because you'll find information about the lives we're doing from here, but also the lives from the event space. Seth and Daniel are working wonders over there, so go check them out. Adorama Events YouTube page is a whole separate YouTube page. Don't miss out on that one as well. I'm Gavin Hoey. Thanks for watching.